Hi, thank you for tuning in to see my birthing experience in Japan. My name is Michelle, and this is Ken. We met in Southern California where I was working as a fitness instructor and Ken was about to graduate from residency. After a couple months of dating, we found out he got stationed to Southern Japan for two years. We both love to travel, so we decided that I would move to Japan with him. And next thing you know, we were making arrangements to move around the world. Our first few months in Japan were magical. It was Sakura season, which means the cherry blossoms were in full bloom and we were surrounded by beauty everywhere. We also got engaged and then married. And next thing you know, we found out that I was pregnant with our first child. We decided to film the birth of our son since not many people experience giving birth in a foreign country, especially one with different cultural beliefs and practices. We are looking baby from the side. This is my OB doctor in Japan, Dr. Hiroshi Higashijima, here with his father. See ya. Left hand, left elbow, left shoulder. And... As you can see, he speaks English, which was a pretty big deal, especially since neither of us knows any Japanese. Less than 30% of the Japanese population speak any English at all, and less than 8% are fluent. In Japan, approximately 56% of OBs are male, which I thought was super interesting because only 20% are male in the U.S. and 80% are women. Dr. Higashijima averages about 40 births a month. Isn't that amazing? Japan as a country has an excellent infant and maternal mortality rate. They're actually lower than they are in the U.S. and are top rated in the world. His warm personality and the kindness and professionalism of his staff make you forget immediately about the language barrier. So basically, even though I couldn't speak any Japanese, I knew that me and my baby were in good hands. This is Higashijima Ladies Clinic, a private birthing clinic that's been around for over 50 years. It was passed down to Dr. H from his father and he's gonna pass it down to his son as well. As soon as you enter, in true Japanese fashion, you take off your outside shoes, sanitize your hands, and pick out a clean pair of inside slippers. The clinic is like a dollhouse. Everything is pink and blue, and there's soft music playing that sounds like it's straight out of a jewelry box. An overall, very different feel from any OB that I had been to in America. The space was much more homey, and as the Japanese would say, very kawaii or cute. Another interesting thing the Japanese do is they give you a set of slippers for the bathroom. These are toilet slippers, and they ensure that your normal indoor slippers don't get wet or dirty. And they also let you know when someone's in the bathroom. If you didn't know, now you do. The Japanese have the most amazing toilets in the world. They have heated seats, they self-sanitize, and they have a bidet, which is a major game changer. Here is the swivel chair. I don't know what the technical term is, but I've never seen anything like this, at least not in the US. And yes, there's a different set of slippers for this room. This chair is used for examinations. You sit down, place your feet in the padded stirrups, they place a towel over you, and then it will lift up, rotate backwards, and spread your legs. During my first visit, they gave me a maternal handbook that documents each visit throughout the pregnancy. In Japan, pregnancy isn't covered by health insurance, but you get vouchers for 14 checkups, one per month until your 23rd week, once every two weeks from 24 to 35 weeks, and weekly checkups from 36 to 40 weeks. Women in Japan are encouraged to gain no more than 20 to maybe 22 pounds during pregnancy, and it's not uncommon for the OB to ask you to try very hard not to gain any more weight and even put you on a diet. Me, I gained about 35 pounds, but I definitely tried to stay active throughout my pregnancy. Based on what I'm seeing here, about 37 weeks and two days. One thing I didn't know was that in the US, you might have maybe three ultrasounds for a normal pregnancy. In Japan, it's very common to get an ultrasound at every visit. They believe that being able to see the development of your baby is comforting for the mother. 
So after almost 10 months of growing this little human inside my belly, all the anticipation has led up to this moment when the first contraction started. How are you doing? Unfortunately, I experienced what they call back labor. Because of the way that my son was positioned, he was occiput posterior, or what they call sunny side up. He was head down, but his eyes were facing up towards my belly, as opposed to facing towards my spine. What I didn't know since it was my first pregnancy was that about 15 to 32% of women experience back labor, but that these weren't normal contractions. I can only describe it as the most intense pain ever. After several days of on again, off again contractions, I was only about one centimeter dilated. Okay, first labor check. First labor check, been contracting since midnight. So for the last six hours? Six hours later. And we just got to Higashijima Ladies Clinic. At this point, my plan was to try to make it through and deliver naturally. It's not common for Japanese women to receive epidural. Only about 6% of Japanese women receive epidural, which is a stark contrast from the US, where approximately 61% opt for an epidural. Luckily for me, Higashijima was one of the few places in Sasebo, Japan that offered an epidural, and knowing that I had that option on the table was huge. Dr. H was supportive either way and was prepared to go along with whatever I felt I wanted to do. <laughs> Once you're admitted, they change your attire into their fashionable pink laboring gown and show you to your laboring room. Naturally, I had to stop and stare at these beautiful newborns that were being cared for on my floor. The reality that I was going to be a mommy and that my whole universe was about to change still hadn't sunk in. Oh my gosh, everything is pink. <laughs> On average, women in Japan spend about six days in the hospital. How you doing? Yeah. The Japanese believe in feeding you healthy meals throughout the day while you're laboring That's and right. post delivery. Ooh. This is some kind of milk thingy. I wonder what that is. Some delicious looking soup. While you're laboring. They would never let you do that in the US. I was served an amazing breakfast, lunch, and dinner, plus dessert on the day that I labored and gave birth. In the US, they typically withhold food and just give patients ice chips. Looking good. I can't say that I was particularly hungry during the time I was laboring, but I think it's mostly because I was distracted by the pain, not because I wasn't hungry or didn't need the food. Five centimeters Probably like six, huh? Get an epidural. You gonna do it? That is the question. While I was in labor, they did intermittent monitoring. They basically checked on me every hour to see how things were progressing. Finally, at around 3 p.m., I was around 8 centimeters dilated, and Dr. H gave me the option of having an epidural and said that basically this was the cutoff point, so it was now or never. I gladly chose to get the meds. At this point, after close to 15 hours of labor, I honestly just wanted some relief. Just preparing for the epidural. The actual process of getting an epidural is painful. I had to lie on my side while they sterilized my spine. Then he picks the spot he'll insert the needle into. He tells me to push into him. With tears streaming down my face and my husband holding my hand, I suddenly felt a twitch in my leg, which honestly scared me and made me cry harder, but then it was over. I stayed lying down while they made sure that the pain was subsiding. They watched the monitor as I had contractions and asked me if I was feeling any pain, to which I responded, no, and thought to myself, why didn't I just do this sooner? From this point on, I had to start to push each time I was having a contraction. I could barely feel them, so we had to keep a close eye on the monitor. 
Finally, we approached the time where I was fully dilated and everyone really prepared for the baby to make his way into the world. At this point, it was about two hours later from the first dose of medicine and I was starting to feel pain again. And it honestly hurt so bad, so Dr. H hooked me up with a little bit more pain meds. With four nurses, the doctor, and my husband by my side, things started to move quickly as our son was making his way down the birth canal. The nurses all counted to 10 in unison as I was coached to take big deep breaths in, hold it, and bear down. Which means, girl, push as hard as you can and get this baby out. Japan is one of a handful of countries where episiotomy is widely practiced. It's usually done during the second stage of labor to quickly enlarge the opening for the baby to pass. Unfortunately, my son had a shoulder dystocia, which means he got stuck in the birth canal, and the doctor had to cut me and use a vacuum to get him out. It was very scary, and when they finally got him out, it seemed like an eternity had passed before we heard his beautiful first cries. You can see the doctor shaking him and doing suction, and my husband nervously looking around to see what was going on. Hearing your baby cry for the first time is so emotional. That little sound that lets you know that they've arrived and they're okay is magical. My husband was able to cut the umbilical cord, which was really, really special for him. Thankfully, our baby boy was okay, and we were finally able to hold him and see his beautiful little face looking up at us. It was honestly such a surreal moment, and without a doubt, it was love at first sight. After letting you hold the baby for a few minutes, they take the newborn for their very first bath. <laughs> they will also do the measurements of their weight and length at this time. Miles was 3,400 grams or seven and a half pounds and about 50 centimeters long or 20 inches. Oh, this heart of mine was made for you I keep falling in love The first few hours and days as a mom are wild I remember thinking, um, okay, what now? What do I do? Well, first they feed you and then move you to your new room Mommy and Miles practicing feeding. They moved us. Nice little view. The next five days at the clinic are wonderful. They feed you amazing meals, check in on you and the baby often, help you when your milk comes in, they show you how to breastfeed, and more. They believe in pampering the mother after childbirth. Each day I had a special service, a leg and foot massage, facial, a scalp treatment with a hair wash and a blowout, and they gave me a little class on how to bathe the baby and also a breastfeeding class to ensure that he was latching properly and he was getting enough milk each feed. Each day the doctor comes in to check on you as well. They do all the standard things that they do in the US before discharging patients, such as screening for newborn heart problems, blood work, hearing tests, bilirubin tests, and even the car seat check. Miles and I had to stay an additional day once they found out that he had jaundice. They did phototherapy on him and it was so heartbreaking to see him like that in the little machine but at the end of the day, he was okay. 
On the last day, after you have your final meal, the staff brings you all kinds of gifts. We got diapers, wipes, bottles, an umbilical cord case, and even a little book with their first photo and a recording of their first cries. Dr. H comes in and takes a picture with you and everyone helps to escort you outside to say goodbye. I can honestly say that my birthing experience was better than I could have ever hoped for. I loved it so much I ended up having my second baby there and my experience was even more wonderful. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed my birthing experience abroad.